I'll start with a roll call if that's okay. Absolutely. All right. I've got uh, Jay Bambara. Here. Jim Calciano. Here. Michelle Phelan. Here. Evan Honeyman. Here. I will note for the record that Sally Hassan Bueller notified us in advance that she's absent today for our regular members. Uh, for alternates, I've got uh, Liz Gemsky. Here. Uh, John Renahan. Here. And Ted Stanford. Here. Okay. Mr. Chair, it's all yours. All right. Thank you, Mr. Renahan. Glad you could join us. Good evening, everybody. I'll now call to order this virtual meeting of the Town of Farming Historic District Commission for Tuesday, July 19th, 2022 at 5.02 p.m. Um, I will appoint uh, Ms. Gemsky as uh, in place of Ms. Hatzenbuehler for the uh, entirety of the meeting. And Mr. Secretary, if you could please read the entire public notice into the record, that would be great. And you can, uh, you can avoid the, all the URLs and things like that. Sure. Uh, first one is Thomas and Caitlin Slater application for a temporary certificate of appropriateness to increase height of previously approved fence from four feet to five feet at 169 Main Street. Second one is Miss Porter's school application for a temporary certificate of appropriateness to replace columns at 63 Main Street. Third one, First Church congregational application for a temporary certificate of appropriateness to replace bituminous entry walk with concrete walk at 75 Main Street. Number okay. four, it, we're not doing four, is that? Because it, I have two different. So that one was already read into the public record um, at our oh, last regular meeting. Exactly, yeah. we put it on. Uh, yeah, it. thank you very much. So we'll, uh, we'll jump right into it. We have our uh, first agenda item, the Slater's, uh, are here on behalf of 169 Main Street. And if you could please just state your names and your address for the record, and then please share with us some information about your application. Uh, Thomas and Caitlin Slater uh, for 169 Main Street in Farmington. Okay, can you provide a brief explanation to the commission what you're proposing uh, for with your application, please? Uh, well, before the, um, this property, when the house used to be there before it burned down, there was a six foot stockade fence surrounding the property. Um, and our builder um, had applied for a four foot picket fence. And we'd like to increase it to a five foot fence uh, because of uh, dog and children. It's on a main street. We feel like it would be safer if we had a little bit higher uh, fence for security. Okay. All right. And uh, we'll open it up to questions and comments from the commissioners. We'll start first with Mr. Calciano. Uh, the material, can we go back to the, yeah, there we go. Uh, so what is the composition of the, um, the fencing? It's going to be the picket fence, I assume? Yep, cedar picket. Cedar picket. Yeah, no, and pretty much the design that uh, was shown for the sample. Yes. Okay. All right. I, I, I have no questions. I thought that's what it was going to be, but uh, I'm fine with uh, what's proposed. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Phelan. Uh, I have no questions, and I'm fine with what was proposed. Thank you, Mr. Renahan. Mr. Renahan? All right, we'll, we'll come back uh, to Ms. Renahan. Uh, Ms. Gemsky? No, it's pretty straightforward. No questions. Thank you. It looks like Mr. Renahan said he has no questions as well in the chat. Mr. Bombara? No questions. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Sanford? No questions. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Okay, hearing none, if anybody's on from the public and would like to be heard, please raise your Zoom hand and Shannon will unmute you. Mr. Chair, there are no, no questions at this time. Okay, thank you. Hearing none, is there a motion on this application? I'll make a motion that we uh, grant the temporary certificate 
of appropriateness uh, for 169 Main Street for a five foot cedar picket fence in accordance with the application as submitted. Thank you very much. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion on the motion? All right, hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 All opposed, please say aye. Hearing none, any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you both very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very too. much. All right. Um, for our second, okay, so we're going on to the congregational church. All right, no, I have it in the, uh, my order is wrong. I apologize. Okay, so no problem. We'll, we'll go in order. I, I uh, labeled them wrong. Okay, no problem. So for our second agenda item, Ms. Murray is here on behalf of Ms. Porter's school for 63 Main Street. Ms. Murray, if you could please just state your name and the address you're representing for the record, and then just share with us a bit about the application and what you're looking to do. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jackie Murray on behalf of Miss Porter's School. This application is for 63 Main Street. It's our Humphrey dorm. Um, as you are all aware, we're doing some renovations of the property right now. And while we were working on replacing the brownstone steps, our contractor realized that the wooden, wooden columns are damaged beyond repair. Um, and so we did have to remove them. And the only column that is available at this time is the fiberglass columns. It's very, very similar. Um, we've attached the specifications for the columns, but it is a different material. Okay. Wood versus fiberglass. Okay, thank you very much. We'll uh, open it up to questions and comments from commissioners. We'll start first uh, with Mr. Sanford. Um. I have no questions to comments. We have approved this type of column before for Miss Porter's, so I, I have no issues with it. Okay, thank you, Miss Gemsky. No issues for me either. Thank you, Mr. Bombara. Well, Ted says that we have approved, I guess, fiberglass columns before, so I'm sure that's accurate. Um, but I'll still, I guess, ask um, those that are more in the industry. Um, I mean, that'll look fine. There's no concern that somehow it won't be noticeably different from a wood column or anything like that. If they would, don't mind answering that. Um, no, I, you won't be able to tell the difference really. Okay, I have no objection. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Renahan? Nothing on my end, thanks. Thank you, Ms. Phelan? No, thank you, Ted, for that explanation. Uh, I have no questions. Thank you, Mr. Calciano? Um, no problems with it. I've uh, personally used uh, fiberglass columns to replace uh, wood columns. Uh, they are almost forever. Uh, they look the same. It, you, you knock on them, they still sound the same. They look the same. So uh, I think it's a, it's a good substitute. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments from the commissioners? All right. Hearing none of anybody from the public is on would like to be heard. Please raise your Zoom hand and Shannon will unmute you. Okay, Mr. Chair, there are no hands raised. All right, thank you. Hearing none, is there a motion on this application? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, temporary certificate of appropriateness to replace wood columns with fiber class columns at 63 Main Street. All right, thank you very much. We have a motion, is there a second? I'll second. All right, thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. Um, all opposed, please say aye. Hearing none, any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes, Ms. Murray. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Okay, moving along here, we have our third agenda item. And uh, forgive me, I, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Is it Mr. Schechinger? Damn close. Took me five years. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, thank you. <laughs> so uh, he's here on behalf of the First Congregational Church at uh, 75 Main Street. And if you could just state your name for the record and the address you're presenting and then share with us a bit about what they're looking to do, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Biff Schreckinger. I'm a landscape architect in the state of Connecticut. Oh, I'm head of the Buildings and Grounds Committee, First Church Congregational. Um, 
we're applying to change the material because we have a toboggan sled of an old bituminous entry walkway up to the meeting house. Uh, it was in great disrepair. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we're proposing to even it out and to tie it into the exist the new concrete sidewalks because there's an economy of scale. They'll be able to pin it into the existing um, the new sidewalk there. And so we're doing it as an upgrade. We figured since the rest of the historic district has concrete sidewalks, this should not be inordinate. They uh, voted me down for the Carrera Marble uh, walkway I wanted. So. <laughs> So that's what we're proposing. It's pretty simple, straightforward. We're regrading out. So it's a nice even pitch. Uh, even though it's not technically accessible with an even pitch on, because it's over 5%, with an even pitch, it should be easy to push somebody in a wheelchair up it or somebody who's walking with a cane. So there isn't a, the dips in it that there are now. So that's what we're hoping to accomplish. Eventually we'll do all the, the bituminous walks that are around the meeting house to tie into the relatively new concrete that's around the green between us and the Barney Library. Got it, okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. I'll open up to questions and comments from commissioners. We'll start first with uh, Ms. Kemsky. No questions for me, thanks. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sanford. No questions. Mr. Renahan. No questions, thanks. Okay, Ms. Phelan. No questions from me. Mr. Calciano. I think it's a good visual improvement. No questions. Thank you, Mr. Bombara. I'll ask a question then. Um, is the uh, apron, if you will, uh, being increased in size or is it all exactly where the current- uh, uh, where the current is? one is. It, it, it'll be even in width. It, ours varies between eight and a half and seven and a half feet as it wobbles up the, the hill there, so. Um, so it, it'll be a consistent eight feet all the way up. And then what about around the uh, steps? Is there more around the steps or? Yes, no? if you go back to the graphic, the upside down, the graphic there, I probably mailed it in upside down. It goes to either side of the steps. And I, I cut it off at the radius point so that we can, we saw cut the bituminous on either side of the sidewalks that go around to the side entrances. And that's our next phase of sidewalk development if and when we can get to it. Okay, so just for my own clarity. So, so you are not increasing the amount of, uh, or it's the same amount of area that is currently covered effectively. Correct. Okay, great. Thank you very much. No further questions. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the commissioners? Okay, hearing none, if anybody from the public is on, would like to be heard, please raise your Zoom hand and Shannon will unmute you. Okay, Mr. Chair, there are no hands raised. Thank you very much. Is there a motion on this application? I'll make a motion uh, that we grant a temporary certificate of appropriateness to the first church at 75 Main Street uh, to replace the existing bituminous entry walk in the front uh, with uh, concrete. Thank uh, you very much. According to the application. Thanks. Thank you. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. So, all right. Uh, just for Sandy's uh, benefit there, uh, was that Mr. Calciano? I heard Liz. Yeah, I think there was multiple. We I captured Liz as well. So. Okay, but uh, okay, sounds good. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure. Um, all right, any further discussion on the motion? Uh, we're moving so quickly, and I, I'm probably wrong. Did Did you ask for public comment or not? Yes. Yes, all we right. did. All right. Sorry. Yeah. No, no. no problem. Always good to check. No further comments. Keep me. In, everyone, keep me in line. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, all right. Any further discussion on the motion? All right, hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 All opposed, please say aye. Hearing none, any abstentions? Hearing none. All right, the motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Thank you, Beth. Bye. Again. Take care. I I'm just trying to uh, make sure everyone can get out and enjoy their, uh, their dog days of summer here. <laughs> Perfect. We'll keep it rolling. Um, yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. I love it, Evan. I just, I just got lost here. So for our fourth agenda item, uh, Mr. Kluger from Harbor Bay Company has been in communication with uh, town planner uh, Rutherford. You can see some email communication here. Fortunately, he does not have a new proposal for us to review at this meeting, and we are not meeting in August. Um, he is speaking with a subject matter expert, as you can uh, see here. So he'll have an update for us, hopefully at the September meeting. And, um, and given that, 
I move that we deny the application without prejudice. And uh, we'll see if there's a second. And just uh, for clarity, um, it has to be denied without prejudice because of the time limitations for the application. So um, we'll just remove it. And I've already explained this to him via email. Um, so that's just clarity for you. I'll second the motion. Thank you very much. Any further discussion on the motion? All right, hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please say aye. Actually, uh, yes, okay, we're approving the denial. Yeah, okay. Correct. I, uh, do we need to, does, no. doesn't the motion need to be in the affirmative, actually? I'm not sure if there's a way to do that. If you're um, gonna deny, deny without prejudice is. Is sufficient, I think. Okay, I just I just wanted to make sure that I'm following all the, mm -hmm. the rules. Uh, okay, uh, all opposed, please say aye. Hearing none and any, any abstentions? Hearing none, okay. The motion passes to deny without prejudice. Okay. <laughs> oh, you got it. All right, thank you everybody for your unwavering support here. All right, so that concludes our public hearing for the evening. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to Shannon for staff report. She has, uh, I think three items she'd like to discuss with the commission tonight. So I'll turn it over to her now. Okay, well, we wanna do staff report and then we'll we'll uh, touch on other business. Yeah, well, just because I, um, hey, sorry. No, you know, well, that's fine. That's fine. We'll, um, I can, I, I'm good, okay. I can roll with it. That's fine, All right. we'll do staff yeah, report. I got everything teed up, so. Okay. Um, we have two high street, which is part of the brick walk shops. And last summer, uh, exactly one year ago, brick walk shops was before the commission to approve the way this was written, um, in the legal notice. Uh, brick walk shops application for temporary certificate of appropriateness, replace siding as needed, um, and it listed these specific addresses. And the application, however, was more general. And it said all buildings as necessary that have not already been recited with Allura or Hardy Cementus siding project products. And it, this was approved, but it was approved based on the wording of this legal notice. Um, and now, of course, they want to put siding on one of these buildings that is part of Brickwalk Shops that they thought they were getting approval for last year, only for us to do the research and realize that's not how it was noticed. Um, they were given all of this information, and when I went, I actually went back and listened to the recording. Um, and uh, it was Kathy Marino uh, on behalf of Brickwalk Shops. And she, whether she was reading it because that's how the legal notice was written or whether, well, I'm not sure why, but she listed those same street addresses. But now they are looking to, I've got a building permit in, and this is the entirety of Brickwalk Shops and the number, the street numbering schematic that we've done for them. To High Street is the Webster Bank building. And so what they had approval for was all the Brickwalk, basically all to most of the Brickwalk addresses and I believe the 767 Farmington Ave. Um, I told her I would chat with the commission to see what everyone's thoughts are, levels of concern. Um, I mean, I don't know, I, the, the cleanest, most specific way is to have them come back in, but it would have to be in September. Now at this point to go through a COA uh, in order to include the rest of these buildings. What it amounted to is it looked, it, it seems it was a miscommunication between what their intent was versus how it translated. Um, to the notices. 
Shannon, um, I, uh, and I, my apologies, I forgot to look through the meeting minutes for that particular meeting. Did, was there any public opinion, any public comment? There was no public comment. No, public, so this is, these are the meeting minutes. So this, again, is back to July, 2021. That's the application. There was no comment whatsoever. Hmm, okay. <clears throat> So apparently, because it's a, uh, my understanding is they had had this approval for the, the, this type of siding at some of the other bill that they had been kind of doing it here and there. Um, right. So they had come in just to, well, let's just do a blanket so that we're not having, you know, every time we either need to make a, a repair or something comes up and we we have the opportunity to do some reciting we're not having to come in each time um right i believe it the intent was it for it to be a catch-all for the entirety of brick walk shops that just didn't get translated that way unfortunately yeah and that's why we did the um the three years because they were going to do it kind of in piecemeal right yeah right okay so, i'm not sure what everyone's thoughts are i i don't have a huge concern or we uh, I just it's unfortunate because if we if we want to get this all added in then it's going to push them to September and they're going to lose the summer for for work doing some of this work but right. was that their time do we know what their timetable was for replacing the other non noted addresses she did it. This is the first one that this is crept up on. I, I did exchange emails with Kathy. I explained to her the situation. I explained the notification. I let her know that I'd chat with you folks uh, this evening. And she said, okay, you know, keep me posted. If we've got to go through the process, we've got to, you know, she, she wasn't, um, she was understanding as, but, and, and again, I haven't spoken with her. It's all been via email. Um, so Okay. Um, so let, let's see what some, yeah, so let, let's just open it up to discussion, Mr. Mambara. I just had a, a question related to that, which is, I mean, is, I assume none of this is on an emergency basis that, you know, somehow there's a problem because there's a clapboard that's deteriorated or something like that. It, it, are you aware of any, uh, Evan? Or, uh, I'm not aware of anything, Shannon. No, not to, not to my knowledge. It was just a general building permit application that came in to reface uh, all or a portion of the, that building. I'm not aware of any emergency situation. I, I guess, you know, it's interesting and I commend um, Shannon, you and the staff for doing a thorough look into this. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if the applicant hadn't stated on the record what they were there for, and we might call it a clerical error, I might be more willing to do it. I hate to be a pain, but I'm more inclined to say because it was that specific, uh, I'm, I'm confident We'll probably approve it, but right, you know, they should have a permit at some point for those specific addresses or come back for again. Well, we can name all the addresses this time or whatever, but you know, I, I think I think we should yeah have paper or permit that covers that. So unless we're willing to call this a clerical error, which I guess I'm not, um I, I guess I wouldn't necessarily be in favor of directing them to say they can just go ahead and do it. They can they can do it and take a chance that. We don't approve it. I'm not advocating that either. I don't think I ever advocate that. Um, but uh, at any rate, that, that's my view, Evan. I'm curious you to know. I, I feel the same way. And, um, you know, I, it's unfortunate, but if it was an emergency situation, I would maybe feel differently, like you said. But uh, does anybody on the commission feel strongly that we should, you know, allow them to replace the siding? Uh, at Two High Street versus um, having them come in in September. Well, yeah, I, I certainly I think would be against uh, a carte blanche uh, simply because you know there's been other issues down there, uh, and I, I I would want to look at all the buildings to see. Uh, I guess they're just getting rid of all the uh, wood clapboards because most of them, I believe. Uh, our, our wood clapboards, I guess they, they're going with the hardy board, which we've approved. So I think you're also right, Evan, and, and that and and Jay, that, that we have, it, it's likely to be approved, but I think we should have the opportunity to see and look at each building. Yep. 
Okay. Any other uh, thoughts on that from anybody? Okay. Okay. So, Shannon, you think you have you, you have what you need to? I, I do. To I will also clarify or that clarify with her that there's nothing ur urgent. My guess is, given our email exchange back and forth, she had plenty of opportunity to say, "Well, hey, wait a second, that's fine and good, but we've got a situation." Um, and because it was more than one email back and forth with her, okay. So I can't believe that there's an urgent situation and she didn't say anything because certainly the opportunity was there to do so. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yep. That's um, fine. I, I have a question. This is Michelle. Um, they have three years and a year has passed, basically, mm -hmm. since that initial, um, the initial, um, temp the certificate of appropriateness, tempor temporary certificate of appropriateness was passed. So for these buildings, then they have two years left and other buildings do they yeah. have to specify that or we we want to um um make sure that uh you know if they want to be able to kind of play replace as needed um maybe they just want to clarify the um extension uh you know be a little uh, clarify the extension for all buildings as they identify the other buildings that they are seeking approval for otherwise you're gonna have you know some with two years some with three years my, you know, my i intend to i'll work with her thank you thank you michelle I, I get where you're going with this i'm gonna work with her my intent okay. is to just redo this. It'll okay. be for brick walk shops in its entirety, starting at the September meeting. And if you all decide that three years from September is still applicable, then the entirety of brick walk shops will go with three years with this, because that was the intent anyhow. So no, we're not gonna. I'm not tracking some with two years and some with three oh, years. That'll make yeah, it. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. Yeah, no. So it'll just we'll we'll start over and we'll capture everything and be done. Okay. okay. Thank you. Of course. Michelle, All right. So that's good. that's item one. Bear with me. We got two more. It shouldn't mm -hmm. be. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad here. Um, so where we were just a minute ago, next to our friends at the First Church of Christ, where so this is the with uh, Biff. Uh, Sheckinger just, uh, we just approved the concrete sidewalk, replacing this bituminous sidewalk here. And as you're all acutely aware, all the sidewalk down Main Street is being uh, replaced and uh, concrete sidewalk is being, uh, re is being installed. Um, our director of public works, Russ Arnold, approached me and was curious what we're, what we're looking to do pending uh, funding and scheduling, they're considering replacing this sidewalk along the north side of Church Street, um, assuming that the, the funds are in place. Why they're out there doing this sidewalk on the frontage, uh, the thought was to bring the sidewalk up to, um, just to, to this, the bar, or this is Barney, um, the Barney Library, but also to the Noah Wallace School parking lot. So. Really, since this is such a, a heavily pedestrian area, we're going and doing the sidewalk here on the Main Street frontage. The intent was to bring the sidewalk up uh, Church Street and then make that connection in um, really, again, with, with the school being there, it seemed like a, a logical uh, opportunity and uh, to do it now while we're doing the other work. So it's really bringing uh, forth to you as a, as an FYI, obviously, if there's any um, objections, concerns, questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, but that's what they're they're considering again, pending funding and scheduling. That's the uh, they're hoping to be able to squeeze that in before school starts. Any objections or concerns, questions? Okay. okay. All right, moving right along. I love it. <laughs> Moving right along. So 169 Main Street. So this, we're going to go back into the recesses of everyone's memory. Um, 169 Main Street is at towards the end of Main, and I can certainly bring a uh, an aerial map up because I don't believe I have one. Um, 
but it's the same, actually it's the same, that was silly of me. It's the same one uh, application that we had at the beginning of the meeting for Slater's. So it's the same property. So the Slater's were in to get the fence approved for the additional height. Uh, their builder and the property owner, Jason Levesque, had come through the historic district. So this is a historic property. The building had burnt down um, in 2015, 16, something to that effect. Uh, Mr. Levesque purchased the property and then he came through the historic district at the end of 2019 and into 2020 uh, to review all the uh, details of the building siding, front door, windows, uh, a number of, of details were reviewed. Uh, they obviously are now getting ready to uh, build. And sorry, I'm just trying to grab the right. Here we go. They're getting ready to build. So these were the architectural elevations that were approved. And they are Everything, I've gone through all details, caught, uh, there were questions about handrails and a few other things. Um, he's corrected handrails on the deck and they are, do the doors at the back of the building. So there's these two doors. This one is under the deck and this one is mostly screened by the deck and it's only visible from main gate, which is a private driveway. And if we come back to this plan, it's these, these doors here at the far north east corner of the building. And again, one's under the deck and one's partially screened from the deck. It's not visible from Main Street at all. And Main Gate is a private road. And currently the, the rest of Main Gate has not been constructed. Um, Mr. Levesque, although he has the approval for the subdivision did not proceed with that. So the style of those two doors has changed with the building permit plan. So this is, this is the look that was part of the plan that had been approved with um, the historic district back at the time. And then Here's the permit set. I'm sorry. Sorry, it's a little sensitive on me. It's a little jumpy from page to page. But these are the doors that are going to go in. So it's three, three lights at the top and more solid panel um, at the bottom, again, with some, some relief for both uh, versus the, just a different light pattern. Again, I don't think it's going to be visible from anything. It certainly is not visible from Main Street. Uh, unless there's a, an objection, I was going to give him the go-ahead to allow uh, him to proceed and um, sign off on the building permit. All other materials, I've reviewed the material list in detail. I've reviewed every call out. I went back through meeting minutes and detail sheets and pulled everything, put everything up. I've got the benefit of two side-by-side -side screens. So I had the approval plans on one and the construction plans on the other um, and went through everything. So I had to do it not only for historic district, but we have wetlands and uh, plan and zoning approvals as well. So unless there's some overriding concern with something that I'm not, um, you know, I've, I'm missing, then my intent is to go ahead and sign off on those building permits. I have a question. Certainly. As, as long as the doors are not metal, I, I don't have a problem with it. I know it's not visible at all. So uh, that would be my only caveat. Okay, I'm not, I'm honestly not sure on the material, but they aren't visible. So what, what's the concern with a metal door? If yeah. it's got... I, I guess in reality, there isn't any, but I just object to metal doors in a historic oh, district. <laughs> no, I, I understand, but with if it's not visible, I'm not sure that there's a purview yeah. either. So I wanted to make yeah. sure, because you're going to see the construction starting, I wanted to make sure everybody knew right, right. that the level of detail that I did go through everything side by side, and that's the only... I, I, I guess I'll take back that objection then. I, I'll agree. I'll go along. Right. For yes. me, anyway, I'm okay. Evan, may I? Uh, Absolutely, yes. 
So, and I don't want to, I mean, I, I agree completely. You can't see it from Main Street. I guess the only question I'd have, and it's a minor one, um, you said they're not going to complete. It, was Main Gate supposed to become, though, a public road once he built that out? No, no, it's designed to private standards. So there's going to be a homeowners association. It's approved as a private road. Yeah. Well, then, I, yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely fine with it. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And Shannon, thanks for the heads up and all the detail and, and painstakingly going through the, uh, the plans. Um, any other thoughts, questions, or comments on this? Okay. Okay. All right. That's a, the last one I had. Um, I will note, miss, um, I believe it's Mr. Connolly has his hand, or maybe not. No, it was just chat or... Now, Mr. Connolly has his hand raised. Mr. Chair, I don't know. Sure. Mr. Connolly, go ahead. Uh, oh, sorry, we have to mute him. Yep, I did. I got it. Thanks. Oh, maybe. Mr. Connolly, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I just had one quick question about the Brickyard Road uh, uh, issue that you had brought up earlier. And by just... Um, I'm glad you guys are looking at that and that you're having some concerns with that because I'm curious to know if by accepting that, are we setting a precedent that we may regret down the road? For the brick walk shops? Yeah. Correct. You know, yeah. I think that's, that. I think uh, everyone in the commission shares the same concern that if we were to just, you know, give them permission to continue with too high street that um, we could be setting a dangerous precedent. So yeah, I, I think you're correct. And, and so that's why we're, we're going to have them come back in September uh, to allow for public, you know, public comment and an actual hearing. Thank you for exploring that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Any, any, uh, anything else? You guys are doing a nice job. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, on to other business. I just have one item here that uh, I wanted to discuss with the, the commission. And this is... <laughs> Kind of surrounding the application procedures uh, for Historic District Commission members. We received some good feedback after our last regular meeting in uh, June that perhaps we should consider changing our procedures for when a commission member um, is uh, applying for a temporary certificate of appropriateness for their own property or a property that they're potentially representing or well, well when it's their own property um, to make sure we're keeping within the town code of ethics and so with, in keeping with the code, I've spoken with um, a member of the commission and also with town uh, planner Rutherford and Sandy was, was very uh, helpful as well, looking at some uh, previous applications. And what we're proposing, and we wanna get some feedback from the commission, is that for any applic applications that are submitted by a commission member, for a minor item, so something that they would be representing themselves, themselves uh, for, that the town staff will present for them, and they will have their uh, Zoom video off, and they will be on mute. Obviously, if it's in person, we would just ask that they uh, leave the room. And then for applications where, uh, they're having a professional, not that everyone on here is not a professional, but having a, you know, a, an architect or an engineer presenting for them, obviously uh, they, that would be fine that they could, that engineer, architect, professional could still present uh, that application. But we would ask again that the commission member just mutes themselves, turns off their camera or for in person at that point in time, just leaves the room until we're, we're through. So um, Shannon, is there anything else that you want to add on that before we open it up for discussion? Uh, no, I think you you covered everything, and I think just as we had chatted briefly, uh, generally by the time we're getting to to being here at the meeting, I'm fairly well versed with the applications. And when we looked through, I guess I did have more to add. <laughs> um, when Sandy Sandy looked through uh, the the list, we it was kind of a, a little bit all over. That sometimes it was a spouse, which is fine, or. Um, a, an in-law or sibling or um, other times there was, you know, presented by staff. And that's really what, you know, what made us think that, okay, well, maybe the easiest thing is that uh, 
since I'm here anyhow, I'm familiar with the applications. I'm happy to uh, just review it with the commission on a uh, on member's behalf. And then it uh, eliminates any concern with uh, any disparity or conflict with the ethics reg. Yeah, thank you. And, and thank you, Mr. Bambara for, um, you know, for bringing this to our attention. Uh, the language is um, a little bit ambiguous, we found, but uh, the first sentence pretty much kind of sets the tone. So we, we, we feel that this is the, the right thing to do. Um, any comments, questions, thoughts, objections to this? Evan, if I can, I guess I'll start. And I did, um, I, I did raise it only because it's funny and I see myself on there, which is exactly right. Um, and uh, full disclosure, yeah, James Riley was actually my, my brother-in-law, Allison's brother, um, who is the carpenter and was going to be doing the work. But, um, you know, it was a family where I don't, I don't think the, the, the ethics. So let me back up. So, you know, I, I, I thought of this probably since I've been on the board, you know, when I first read through some of the things that apply. And, of course, as a geek lawyer, I can't help but focus on everything. Um, and I tried to figure out what that really meant. And I do agree, you, you, it, it is a little ambiguous, but... You know, it seemed clear to me, and then you think about what's the best practice, really, more than anything else. And again, it's not because any of these applications, or for that matter, if anybody on this panel came before here, I'm not concerned they would get favorable treatment. That's never the point, or almost never the point. Um, you know, it's really about best practice and how we can avoid uh, a look of impropriety. In other words, somebody talking behind our back saying, oh, look at these guys over here. You know, they tell us we can't do that, and then they go and approve that for themselves. Uh, you know, or actual liability where we pass something and somebody sues and says, well, you didn't follow your ethics code. Um, so if you read the ethics code, it does say that a member of a board can't represent himself before the board, uh, I think, effectively, is what it really is trying to say. Again, it's arguable. Um, I don't have any problem with what's gone on in the past. So I do think that would this would be a, a better thing to do, I guess. Uh, having the option of the, the staff uh, or Shannon is great. I mean, the thing that one reason I never really brought it to the fore and uh, more or, or thought about it more was um, cost. I don't, you know, I certainly don't, you know, it, it seems not fair to say to somebody, hey, volunteer all your time, which is effectively money, et cetera. And by the way, when you want to do something to your own home, you're going to have to hire somebody separately. I, I want to avoid that. Um, I was able to do that um, and hopefully others. But um, so having the staff as an option, I think is great. Obviously you could still have your own uh, person or professional, it could be anybody. Uh, it could probably even be your, a spouse. Um, but at any rate, um, uh, you know, I personally think that's a better practice. Again, it did not come up for any specific reason. Quite frankly, <laughs> other than I missed the beginning of the last meeting and then I kind of said, well, what happened? And then and Ted, I'm not, it was not at all because you did it, but it just sort of the bell went off again, like, oh yeah, I forgot, what's the rule on that? And so at any rate, I asked Evan, you know, who presented and then it just, uh, we had a conversation. That's what started this. I, I hope I didn't make a, a mountain out of a molehill, um, but I kind of appreciate that maybe looking forward, we can set a rule that um, I think is probably in the best interest of all of us as well as the town. So thank you. And I appreciate that. I, I don't think you made a mountain out of molehill at all. I, um... And thanks for the clear, you know, clarification. I, I I think it's a great idea, Shannon. Thank you for you know, and Sandy for for mentioning that town staff could do it because that was also one of my concerns was, folks are going to have to incur an expense uh, if they had to hire an engineer or somebody else to present on their behalf. So right, uh, yeah, which is kind of silly if it's just something as simple as windows. But if somebody's going to the expense of doing a, a home expansion anyhow, then you've already hired the architect. In which case, it makes sense then. If they're already doing all the drawings and everything else, then they can come to the meeting. I mean, I can certainly do that as well. But um, when you're getting to something to, like that, there's generally terms and termino you know, different terminology and different finishes and things that need to be discussed that you really want somebody um, with a little more experience than myself in that. Um, but the basic things I'm happy to help with. Thank you. So any other thoughts, questions, objections? I'm, I'm good with it. You know, I could see, you know, somebody could say something. Uh, and, and in fact, there may be nothing there. Shannon certainly is very capable of doing it. And uh, <clears throat> I've been on it a couple of times and I will be on it again, I'm sure, in the future. But because uh, <laughs> there's two properties involved and uh, you never know. 
but uh, I'm fine with it. I think it's a great idea, and uh, it uh, it was a I think great that that has been placed in front of us, and and I'm for it. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, thoughts, objections? Anything? This is Liz. I did. I I actually would suggest that it probably shouldn't be a spouse, um, just to maintain. Um, conflicts of interest questions. So um, I agree. I think it's a good procedure moving forward to have staff, if applicable, do it or someone who's working on the project. But um, I actually think it probably shouldn't be the person, the member and or their staff. Okay. Their spouse. I mean, oh, or their spouse, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, and, and Mr. Renahan uh, commented that he, he agrees uh, as well. So um, so Mr. Rambar, thank you again for bringing this up and thank you, Shannon and Sandy, for spending the time, you know, looking back historically to see what uh, has been done. And I don't think that we need uh, an official vote on this. I think we I think, you know, we have a consensus and we'll just move forward with this procedure. And if for whatever reason um, we have to, uh, you know, evolve our position on this in the future, we'll revisit at that time. So everyone's good with that. We'll uh, we'll move on. Okay. 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 So we just have uh, uh, our, our meeting minutes from our last regular meeting, which was on June 21st, 2022 to consider. Um, there, I, I think there was one minor change that we had made. I can't remember. Um, is, Sandy, is Sandy on? Sandy, do you Oh yeah, to... Sandy's here with us. Sorry, was there, what was the... Um, I just wanted to let the commission know what the change was. I don't, can't remember. I don't know, it was something minor, so I just changed it and reposted it. Yeah, okay. Oh, like oh, a typo, right? like kind of a typo thing? Yeah. Okay. Think, yeah, or, or maybe it was like a moat. Yeah, or, or misstated a person who made a motion type of thing. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't anything major, but um, is there, would anybody like to comment or make any changes to the, to the minutes? Okay, is there a motion to uh, approve the minutes? I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as submitted. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please say aye. Hearing none, any abstentions? Hearing none. All right. The minutes pass. I think that's it. Thank you, everybody. This was, uh, we got a lot done. Uh, this was a 10 out of 10. Thank you guys for your, uh, your patience and uh, your efforts tonight. Have a good July, a, a nice August, and we'll talk with you guys in September. Meeting is now adjourned. Thanks. Thanks. Have a great evening, everyone.